No LNG. No LNG. No LNG. No LNG. So why are we here? We're here to unanimously pledge our opposition from all levels of government to the disastrous proposal of putting an LNG terminal out here off of our coast. There are many reasons to oppose this and be concerned with this, both environmentally and economically. Our economy needs high wage, permanent union jobs. But what we need to get there is we need robust investment in our uh, renewable resources infrastructure and conservation. And by doing that, that will create the long-term green jobs that our economy desperately needs. Our energy choices matter. We need to move away from fossil fuels and our dependency on them. Our children and our grandchildren are depending on us. It is a great honor for me to introduce our next speaker. I'm excited by her uh, leadership on this issue, and I'm thrilled at the beginning of a great new partnership, our Congresswoman, Kathleen Rice. Great to be here. I have to say that this is uh, my, I, I just spent 10 days in Washington, and this is my first public appearance as a Congresswoman. And I can't think of a better place to do it than right here in Long Beach. I want to thank uh, Councilman Aramo. Thank you all for joining us here. I am incredibly happy to be here. As everyone knows, this is one of my favorite places to be on Long Island. It is truly one of our treasures here in this congressional district. Uh, and throughout uh, Long Island. I'm glad we have the opportunity to get together as officials from local, county, state, and federal government to show that we are united in opposition to this LNG terminal. We know that you don't want this facility built off of your shoreline, and that's what it is. It is your shoreline. We know that you feel excluded and ignored, and we're going to make your voices heard. Now, last week I wrote a letter to Governor Cuomo urging him to veto this LNG proposal, as have many of my colleagues here today. I urged him to veto this proposal because we rely on the ocean and our coastlines, and we simply cannot afford the risk that this terminal would pose. It's a threat to our local economies, it's clearly a threat to our environment, and it's a threat to the health and quality of life of all the people who live here. Uh, I urged Governor Cuomo to veto this proposal. It is within his power to do that because communities like Long Beach, uh, everyone here knows, are still recovering from Superstorm Sandy. That is two and a half years ago, almost two and a half years ago. The boardwalk we're standing on uh, has been rebuilt. It is one of the most beautiful boardwalks ever. They did it better and smarter and stronger. Even though I just got my heel caught uh, on this boardwalk, but I will never wear heels here again. Uh, there is a lot of work left to do. People are still rebuilding and fighting to come home. Small businesses are still rebuilding and fighting to bounce back. Local government is still working to rebuild infrastructure and prepare for the storms that we know are to come. It's not a question of if, yes. it's a question of when. This community is still recovering, still rebuilding, and building this facility is nothing but an added burden that we do not want and we do not need. Finally, I urge Governor Cuomo to veto this proposal because building a liquefied natural gas terminal off our coast just doesn't reflect who we are and what our priorities are. It does not reflect our commitment to reducing our dependence on fossil fuels. It does not reflect our commitment to cutting greenhouse gas emissions and reversing the effects of climate change. We on Long Island have the opportunity to be leaders in the transition to clean, renewable energy production. We want to invest in wind and solar power. We want to create good green jobs. That's what we want. That is our priority. So, there is no reason for Long Island not to be the leader when it comes to uh, these renewable forms of energy. There is absolutely no reason, and it starts right here. So again, I want to thank you all for being here today. I want to thank all of the residents who have spoken out about this issue. There is nothing 
Uh, there is no voice stronger than residents of a community who come out here on a beautiful but cold day like this and let your voices and your presence be heard in support of something that you know is going to affect the quality of your life here uh, in Long Beach. We hear you, we are with you, from the local to the federal level, we are united and we will make your voices heard. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congresswoman. Our next speaker and new partner in the, up in Albany and in the state, um, our new Assemblyman, Todd Kaminsky. Thank you, Anthony. I want to quickly start by uh, addressing the process that I've been so disappointed with. But I want to say that even though the process is designed to silence our voices, we've done a great job with keeping our voices raised and letting people know how we feel about this. Yeah. There was a hearing here, not last summer, but the summer before that. And as this, as this proposal becomes more and more real, they decided to hold one hearing in Jamaica, Queens. And it was done right after the holiday. And I frankly think it, uh, it's not a coincidence that this was you know, designed uh, so something could sneak by. But it's not gonna sneak by because we have great leaders like Kathleen Rice, and, and all of us who stand here today who are, who are not going to let that happen. And our residents especially have done a great job with that. Um, we stand here in a perfect position, and I'm so glad that, that Anthony and the city of Long Beach put it right here, because the answer as to why this proposal won't work is right behind you. We have the most beautiful beaches you could find anywhere. I'll, 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 take, that test any, I'll take that test or challenge any time. And anything that's a threat to that is something we must take very seriously, and there better be a very good reason um, for a proposal that may pose a threat to, to our to our natural beauty. And I've knocked on 4,000 doors in this last year. I can't find anyone who can tell me the answer to that. Why, why we need this and why we want this. I can't find anyone in support of this. We need to be moving forward with green energy, certainly not backward, and we would certainly bear the brunt of any catastrophe that might result. So it's a good reason why from the, the federal level to the state level to the municipal level, we're all united against this. We've done a great job so far making our voice heard. Let's keep going. We've got great leaders here today, and let's remember we will not stop until we get a solid no. Thank you. Thank you, Assemblyman. Our next speaker is a, a partner at the county legislature. She's always there for Long Beach. Uh, county legislator Denise Ford. Thank you, Anthony. You know, we are weary from uh, rebuilding after Sandy. But let, make no mistake, we are energized in our fight against this LNG terminal. This is time that we have to put an end to this. We know, that we, we know that we have to move away from our dependence upon oil, but going the way of building an LNG terminal off of our shore is not the way to go. We can build a beautiful wind farm that will provide the much needed jobs for our union brothers and sisters. We call upon Governor Cuomo to join us in the fight against this. We did not want years ago the floating gas terminal that they wanted to put there. We do not want the Port Ambrose terminal that they want to put today. And God willing, we are going to keep on fighting for any future type of LNG terminals, things that will be detrimental, not only to our environment, but also pose a great safety risk to the residents here on the Barrier Island and east and west of us. So Governor Cuomo, listen to what we have to say. Listen to the citizens and the residents down here. Listen to your partners in government and vote no and join us in opposition to this terminal. Thank you. Thank you, Legislator. You know, this, this terminal doesn't just affect this barrier island, it, it affects everyone uh, on Long Island and the South Shore. And that's why we have another county legislator here to speak, um, Legislator Laura Curran. Yeah. I just have to say that you guys in Long Beach are really lucky to have such great representation on the federal, state, city, and county level. And I don't represent Long Beach, but I do represent uh, large parts of Baldwin and Freeport in that area. And I just want you to know that you're not alone in this. South Shore community is going to pull together to fight this. And it's clear that the people don't want it. And so we stand united to help you fight it. Thank you. Next up is our Long Beach City Council Vice President and former President of Long Beach City Council, Len Torres. Thank you, Anthony. And uh, thank you, Assemblyman and uh, Legislator Ford. And 
Uh, we appreciate everyone coming out on such a cold day. Uh, one of the things that uh, really concerns me is that, you know, although we, we have a voice and we will exercise that voice to, uh, to let everyone know about uh, this project and how we're opposed to it, but there's a voice that we don't hear, and that is the voice of the environment, the, the, the uh, fishery. Uh, the minute we start to dredge, and this is one of the parts of the plan, are dredging over uh, 17 miles of, of uh, ocean floor. The kind of disruption that that would cause and the increase and the, the lowering of oxygen levels for our sea life will be devastating. And it will affect the economy, not only of Long Beach, but of all of Long Island and the fishing industry. We must stand together, all of us, and continue this fight. And we hope that our governor is hearing us. We do not want this LNG project here. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Torres. And our final speaker, another former past president and councilwoman, Fran Adelson. Thank you so much. I'm clean up, I guess. This is what happens. Everybody said everything that you wanted to say. But really, what I really wanted to do was, I know that this issue is much larger than Long Beach, but I re what I really wanted to speak to, and I wish he was standing here, is Governor Cuomo. I really feel that, um, you know, he owes us at this point in time. After Superstorm Sandy, he came here. He saw what happened here. He, along with um, Senator Chuck Schumer, helped us rebuild, get the funds to rebuild this boardwalk. Cuomo was responsible for millions and millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars, money that he's given us to help us rebuild and help the infrastructure on the North Shore to do bulkheading, to protect our utilities. Where is he? he? He, you know, we're at a point in time where if this goes through, it's going to negate and take away from every single step that we've made in the right direction. We've rebuilt a wonderful city. There's still a lot more to go. Where are you, Governor Cuomo? We need you to veto this. We need you to veto this. Now you have the power. Help move our city forward. Thank you. Thank you. Well, some of the concerns that I really think that there are is um, it's an unfunded mandate to our first responders to have to um, deal with something like this that's just beyond the scope of a volunteer force to take care of. So in that respect, just that alone should have people worried. What would happen? So I've talked to some of those um, some of those leaders uh, from uh, the local fire departments who've told me that um, it's not a question of what they can do about it. It's a question of evacuation. And and it can't be done. An evacuation could not be done if there was some kind of eminent. Now, now, am I saying that that's likely? I'm not, but it's a possibility, and it's a possibility that can't be taken off of the table. So, um, that's that's one of the big concerns. Another big concern is the environment. It's not. Um, it's not. Uh, going to be good for the environment out there, and and the fact that it's going to be in right in the middle of the proposed wind farm is a terrible thing because that proposed wind farm will do more for stabilizing our prices mm -hmm. than any potential LNG port or any other form of the same natural gas that, that they're using now. It's just more of the same. If you have a competing force, it is going to do a lot more to, uh, to drive the prices down then maybe some we're finding somewhere in the world that they could get cheaper gas than it's already here and they don't have such a thing right now. Right. Um, our officials here have been amazing. Um, we reached out to, uh, to Long Beach City Council after we had our meeting in October at the library. Actually, they attended, um, they had some staff attend and they were very engaged and very involved. And, um, and really everybody that we've reached out to has kind of uh, stepped up and said, you know what? This is not good for our our area or our residents. So um, they've all really been phenomenal, uh, and it's just a matter of trying to reach out to other areas too and bring really more of Long Island together. So you know, where it's kind of in a grassroots movement, but we are, as you saw today, we're getting a very good um, response from the people that we've been reaching out to. So we're growing from a local, and we're going to try and now bring that out to a further, um, you know, more of a regional. You know, as far as Long Island goes, and and you know, whoever, whatever, whatever help we can get, we're going to take it. You awesome. know.